Bread in a cage feeder, bread on a method. It's a cold winter's day, we're on a commercial and we're gonna put them both to the test. But make sure you stick around to the end of the video where we're gonna have a competition and your chance to win a full set of Matrix feeders. Right, so you join us here today at Makin's Fishery. Uh, we're on pool three today on a cold February day. And uh, we're gonna show a few different feeder methods of fishing with bread. Now, bread's a common winter bait, but I brought something a little bit different today. Um, quite often used on natural venues, liquidized bread, but um, you never don't really see it so much on commercials. So we're gonna give it a go. We're gonna fish it on a couple of different ways. Um, got an open end feeder, as you would conventionally think of fishing bread, but I've also got some open alloys with me. So we'll give them a go later, hopefully catch a few carp. Let me spin around now, I'm itching to get fishing, not wet a line yet, so let's get going. Right then, so we're ready to go. First cast, not cast in yet, so um, just quickly run you through what we're gonna use. I've got a nine foot rod, an open end feeder on a running rig, 18 inch hook link with three bits of bread on the hook. Really simple, super easy. I've compressed the bread a bit because I want it to sink, I want it to be on the bottom next to where my bread feed is. Don't know what we're going to catch. We could catch anything in here. There's some carp, skimmers, some roach, but the great thing about bread is we're going to catch all of them using it. So let's have a cast. So I've picked a marker. And I'm going to... I'm all clipped up, ready to go. So we cast out and hopefully we get one first cast. It's important to make sure you're clipped up. I think with any feeder fishing, it just makes sure you're, you're completely accurate all the time. So Definitely, especially when you're fishing like this, open end feeder, we're trying to create a nice little pile of bait, a nice little area of bait, get them fish in, home them in on it, and try and get them feeding. So they're not gonna be moving too much. If, if the fish aren't feeding that well, I've got another rod behind me. I've got an open alloy feeder on, I'm not clipped that one up so that if I need to cast around a bit, try and find the fish first, we can do that. It's uh, middle of Feb, not very warm at all. Um, so it's gonna take probably a, a little while before we get a bite, but confident that we will. We just gotta try and slowly build the swim. I'm probably gonna cast every 10 minutes, once every 10 minutes, see what, uh, what comes along. Oh, we just had a little touch already, so. That's not a bad start. So hopefully there's a few fish in the area, which uh, is always nice. I've, uh, I've got my line tension just ever so slightly. So there's just a slight bending. I'm not slack lining at the moment. I've just got a little bit of tension in the tip, not pulled right round, just, just a little bit, just so that I can see any of those little little indications. So if I start getting lots of, lots of indications and no bites, I might slacken the line off a little bit. Um, 
They might be just a bit wary of the line in the, in the swim, but you never know with these winter fish. There we go, lovely little common to start the day off. It's taken 45 minutes to get a fish, but we got a nice one. I'm gonna get this in the net, explain a bit about what we've been doing and how we caught that fish and how the rig works. So let's run you through it. So I've been fishing, yeah, 40, just under 45 minutes that bite came. The bite came after a couple of minutes of the rod being in the water, so pretty quick. Um, I've got stopwatch on my side tray, just time in my cast, just so I know roughly, might be able to find a pattern, not leave the rod in the water too long. Right, but most importantly, let's run you through in a bit more detail about the rig I'm using to catch this fish. So, like I said earlier, we've got a nine foot Aquos rod, lovely little rod, we're only casting short, it's perfect for this sort of fishing. Couple that with an Aquos 3000 reel, small compact size, loaded with six pound Horizon Mono. Now that's straight through to a feeder link running on the line. It's just a running rig, simple running rig, little open end, bottom weighted feeder. And then I've got a hook length swivel there and I'm just protecting the knot with a swivel protector bead. So it's just enough of a bead just to keep and stop any damage from happening. 18 inch hook link and I've got an MXC3 size 16 to 0, 016 power micron and just a little super stop on the end. Simple as that, really easy. Just putting a bread in the feeder, three discs of bread on the hook and it's worked. So let's rebate, have a go again, see if we can catch another one. Another cast, two minutes on the clock we got another one. So again, this was on the open end feeder, just a little cage, bottom weighted cage, with three bits of bread on the hook. Three. We got another one. So they're obviously liking the bread. And like I said earlier, it's a method that you don't often see people using liquidized bread on a on a commercial, but as today is proving, it's quite an effective method. We've got an angry, angry common on here. Here we go, let's get him in the net. Oh, got him after some poor netting. So, let's have a look at this one. Let's get him out and have a look at him. Some lovely fish here on pool three at Makings. There we go, look. A lovely common, and you can just see there the open end feeder. Got him, very nice. So we'll unhook this one and have another cast because I think there's some fish there now, and we can catch a few more. So he's in the net. Now I'm just using three pieces, three 10 mil punches to start with, and I've stuck with that all the way through. I think 10 mils are good, especially when you're fishing for carp, 10 mils are a good size to start with. Punch them out and put them on the super stop. Super simple and very effective. There you go, so we've got three bits on. I'm only giving them a, a light squeeze now. So I want these discs of bread. I don't want them up in the water. I want them down where my feed is, to where the bread feed is. I want these bits of bread down there, so give them a, a light squeeze. Just make sure that they'll they'll sink, but they'll sink nice and nice and gently, nice and lightly, and just waft about just a, just above or just on the bottom. So let's line up and have another cast. Get the clip, and hopefully we can catch another one. Well, 
Right, well, we've got another one. It's fighting a bit different to the last few carp. But, oh, that's what it is. Just caught a glimpse of something silver there. So, there we go. It is a chub, which just goes to show that everything eats bread. And there we go, see, just because you're using bread doesn't mean you're just going to catch carp. So there's a nice chub there, let's get him in the net. And that was a really quick bite, that was. So we've caught a nice chub. Just goes to show, if you were using pellets, you never know, you might not have caught him. It's an extra fish in your net. Brighten up your day a bit. Everyone loves a chub. First chuck on the open alloy feeder and we got a lovely mirror. Let's try and lift him out, he's a bit lively. There you go, you can see, you might be able to see just there, there's a, still a bit of bread left in the feeder. So I've done exactly the same thing with the open feeder that I've done with, let's get him back, with the open alloy and all I've done He's put three 10 mil discs of bread on a short hook link. I've filled the open alloy feeder with the bread, chucked it out, and it's gone round straight away with a lovely fish. So let's run through the gear that we've got on this rod. So I've got a 10 foot horizon, and then I've got a 3000 horizon reel loaded with the same six pound line. Really simple, really easy. On the end, we've got an intersize open alloy feeder. And this is, an, here at Makings, you can use elasticated feeders. So we've got an elasticated stem. I like to use elasticated feeders wherever I can. I just feel they offer better hooking um, and you can get away with slack lining a bit more. So let's get rid of that bread out of there. And lastly, four inch hook link. Again, same hook. It's a 16 MXC3 with a super stop. Really simple, really easy, but we all know how effective it can be. So I'm gonna quickly put three more discs on again, I'm just punching out three pieces of bread, giving them a bit of a squeeze. Just spike them on there. There we go. So with this, I'm actually casting it over the same line as the open cage feeder. Now, I just want to see, it gives me a bit of a, an idea as to which one's more effective. So maybe the short hook link is a bit more effective than the longer hook link with the cage feeder. You don't know. So all I'm doing now, a bit of an experiment, chuck it over the same line, packing that bread on. It's reasonably deep out there. I reckon it's probably about eight or nine feet deep where I'm fishing. So I'm just packing that bread on, onto the feeder, casting it out. Let's hopefully chuck it out and get another one. So there we go, hit the clip and I'm sinking my line down. Make sure you sink your line, get your line under the water. It's not going to get dragged by any wind and then slowly just stick that on the rod rest and we're ready to go. Reset the stopwatch. All my, cast, all my fish have come within five minutes. So what I've done, I'm going to actually shorten my casts down. I'm going to, instead of having 10 minute casts, I'm going to have six minute casts because if all my bites have come, I've had six or seven fish now, all my bites have come before five minutes, I'm essentially wasting another five minutes waiting for it to go round when I could have another cast, some fresh bait on. So we'll fish this out, see if there's any difference between the two methods. You never know, they might be exactly the same, but it's another method in your armory 
that you can use, especially on cold days like this. Right, so I've left the rods out of the water because the bites are coming really quickly now. I'm just going to run you through the baits that we've got today for today's session. So really simply, we'll start off with the feed. Now, all this is, is just a coarse breadcrumb. I've got some big chunks in there because I'm after some decent quality fish. So all I've done when I've got here, put loads of water with it. Bread takes loads of water on, um, but it also binds nicely, this bread. So it'll bind around the open alloy feeder and it'll stick nicely in a cage feeder. So it's about eight or nine feet out there, I think. So I'm sure that it'll get to the bottom on or in the feeder, just where I want it. So for hook baits, I don't think you can beat the faithful sliced bread. So as you can see there, I've just been using 10 mil punches. I've been using three 10 mil punches on the hair, giving it a bit of a squeeze just to make sure that it's down on the bottom where my feed is. One other thing I think it's important to mention is to have some change baits with you. Um, especially on hard days, just changing your bait can often just bring in a bite or two extra. So for change baits, I've got some corn. We all know how much fish love sweet corn, especially quality fish like carp. If there's the odd F1 in the venue, corn can be really good. And just a couple of others to go with those. I've got some pop-ups. Now, like the bread, I can either use a bit of pop-up to help my bread pop up, or I can just use a pop-up on its own. I've got some dumbbells and some round ones in there if I want to fish a bait off the bottom. And lastly, some durable hookers. Again, there's a theme going on here. These are white durable hookers, six mil. So they're gonna stay on the hook. I can quickly spike them, so I don't need to change my hook link. I can use the same hook link for all of my fishing. That's another one. I've not had to use any of the other baits apart from the old faithful sliced bread today because the fishing's been really good. So let me grab my rod. Let's have another cast, see if we can catch a couple more. Light's starting to go now, so we haven't got long left. Well, we've had a really good day. The, uh, the bread feeder has been very good today. I'm back on the cage, you might notice. I've uh, I've been switching between the two methods, but the cage has definitely been slightly more effective today with the longer hook link. And uh, it's been really, really good. We've fished with bread on the hook all day. Nice little mirror. So let's have a look at this one. Let's unhook him. Put my rod to the side. And I think this is going to be our last one because it's just starting to spit with rain and we don't want to get wet but there we go hope you've enjoyed the video and got some tips if you like the video don't forget give it a thumbs up click that subscribe button because we've got loads and loads of videos coming so get him in the net we might have a look at what we've caught today. Brilliant. Well, there we go. Fruits of a lovely day. Winter's days fishing on the bread. We fished it in both the cage feeder and the open alloy feeder. Cage feeder's been better today, but we caught a lovely net of fish. So hopefully there's some tips there and some tactics that you can try in your next session. Give the bread a go. You might be surprised what you'll catch. So for your chance to win a set of Matrix feeders, comment below with what punch size I've got all my fish on today.